Hello friends! Today I'm going to do a little unboxing video and swatching and trying out these new acrylic paint pens that I got from Thule Art. And I got the, <coughs> excuse me, the Earth and Skin Colors and the Essential Set. Today I also want to compare them with my good old Posca pens. I have a small set of Poscas of eight pens, and I also have this set of acrylic markers by Artix. So, well, let's get into it then. First, I'm going to unbox this. There's some shrink wrapped plastic around it, so I'll just use this knife and remove it. <clears throat> Okay, and this one, this one does not come shrink wrapped. It just has a sticker here. So I will remove that. And so here it is. These are 36 pens and I'm super excited to try them. So I've got my little sketchbook my very favorite little Stillman and Burn Nova beige sketchbook. And I use this one for almost exclusively for acrylic markers. So I have my little landscapes in here. Anyway, so this is the one I'm gonna to use to swatch because this is the one I am going to use these markers for. Um, these pens, I mean. Once I'm done with this sketchbook, I'll do a little flip through. <clears throat> so, let's begin. Oh, it's a big set. <laughs> Lots of pens. <laughs> oh. Right, that's a lot of pens. And there is a little card in here. Ah, yes, this tells you how to use the pens. Where you shake it. And then press the tip. Oh, okay. Well, it just tells you how to use them, I guess. And oh, this is a nice little addition. It has a few extra nibs. I like that. Okay, let's try a few. Okay, so far my first impressions are pretty good. I will look at the other set now as well, which is the essential set. Start activating them. I like that it has so much versatility. I really don't feel like there's any difference between these and my far more expensive Posca pens. So just for reference, I got these, this eight pack of Poscas. Oh, where it, here it is. For the price basically of all of these pens from Thule Art. So in terms of value, these seem to be really good value so far. <laughs> Hmm. 
Oh, very nice. This is almost like a neon pink. I love it. Let's try this bright red. Guys, so far so good. I mean, that's what I can say. Now, one thing I would love to try and see is how they activate with water. And that's because I use this technique a lot with my little landscape paintings with these um, with acrylic markers. So let's see. Let's start from the top one, which is the one that is almost dry. The very first one I swatched. And it's not activating which is actually a good thing because one of my problems with these, which are these Artix uh, acrylic markers, <coughs> excuse me, is that once they are dry, they can still be activated, which means, which tells me that they're not quite acrylic markers, but these are not activating when they're dry as much. Okay, this one's activating a bit but it wasn't fully dry as much as the first one. So that tells me also that it's possible to activate them when they are still a little wet. So let's try with this one. Oh, very nice. Look at that. That looks really good. So that means you can draw this color and create washes and basically move it around and paint with it the way you would any kind of paint. Now, the reason why this is cool is because with the pen and with the nib, you can get some really precise, you know, lines and you can be really precise with where you put your color. And then you can use the brush with a little water to maybe to like lighten part of it or to create like a wash effect like this, for example, in some areas or to spread the color around within the confines of your drawing or your um, your sketch or whatever. So it, it, it really has its um, two different purposes. This also helps with mixing. So for example, here, we can mix a little bit of the orange with the pink and it gives us this beautiful peachy color. That means that you can stretch your colors even further by mixing them up and creating new colors that you don't have, which is a very cool thing to do. Okay, so far so good. Let's see how they do when you add a light color over on top of a darker color. How opaque are they? <clears throat> so one thing I've noticed is that the colors here are numbered. Let me just try to see how if I can show you this. So they're numbered and the numbers are dependent on the, so it's not like number one is going to be the same as number one in the other set. No, each set has its number zero, it's number one, it's number two, three, four, etc. So that's something to look out for, which is that you don't have the same numbering system all across the, you know, the different sets. Here there are two of these zero, zero, which I believe is the white. <clears throat> I don't know if you can, if I can, yeah, here we go. It's the white and which I think is a very good thing because I think that white is the most important color. You will probably want white and black. So there are two whites and two blacks in the essential set, which is fantastic because those are the two most important and versatile colors you're gonna need 
with something like this. Okay, let Oh, I like this white. Very nice. I'll compare it with the Posca white now because <clears throat> that's the one I use the most. Now let's see how the white does on top of darker colors. See the opacity. Hmm. It also, if you can, I don't know if you can see it well, but here it picked up a little bit of the color that hadn't dried yet. So that is something to look out for when you apply a lighter color on top of a darker color but after you know you use it a little bit you can clean the nib so that's how you um, <clears throat> clean your nib okay so let's try comparing our good old trusty Posca now let me show you what I mean by the puddles that Posca pens create so it also takes a bit to activate this. Oh, maybe this one's running out anyway. <laughs> so as you can see, it's, um, yeah, <laughs> not the best. So I think this one's actually almost empty. Let's see how it looks next to this one. And that's because it leaked out so much that it lost a lot of ink. Oh, there you go. There you go. Typical Posca puddle right there. <laughs> now let's see how it compares to the Thule art ones. So the one on the left is Posca, the one on the right is Thule Art. I am not noticing any difference, to be honest. The Poscas and the Thule Art seem to be almost identical. Let's try a different color. hot pink Thule art. Oh, I have to say, I, I think that the Thule art one actually looks better. It's much more vibrant and even more opaque. Oh, this is such a great revelation. I am so excited about these pens because this means you don't have to pay to more for Posca pens, which can be pretty pricey. And these can be a perfectly, um, you know, a perfect, much more affordable alternative that uh, is available in far, you know, way more colors than the Poscas are. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, there's so much easier to get and so much cheaper, <laughs> way more affordable than the Poscas. Okay, so. I'm going to try them out on my black paper sketchbook to see what we find here. So I really love this um, Canson black drawing paper. It is not the best for wet media, but sometimes I kind of use wet media with it a little bit, but it is absolutely fantastic for things like colored pencil, like this. and pastels. Put 
pastels and more colored pencil over here <clears throat> soft pastels so yeah pretty cool paper really love it um i will try it with these acrylic markers to see how well they perform on black paper maybe we can do a little um little landscape how is that for an idea so i've got a little landscape here an ocean landscape with some it's a very simple one <clears throat> Okay, so um, I will try using the earth set for this since, you know, it's an earthy landscape. Let me decide on what my palette is going to be because <laughs> there's, I am spoiled for choice here. Okay, let's start by... Maybe I'll sketch out a little outline for the for this island or this piece of land and for the sky so that I know where you know the sky begins and where this ends. So let's activate this grayish beige color for this. So wait a second, do they have names? No, they just have numbers. So this is number 32. Okay, I am going to make a rough outline here. And I will, after doing this, I'll do the sky. So let's start. Okay, let's. Start up here, a bit dark on top, and then we'll go lighter. So another reason why you might need, or you might want to use um, activating it with water is because that will help you spread the paint faster instead of having to do this. So as you can see, see, if I just add a little bit of water, just a tiny amount, not enough for uh, it to affect the paper too much, but enough to move the paint around. That's what you want. Move it around a little and spread it down. <laughs> Look how it buckles. It is not made for wet media, so very pale blue. I'm going to try to <clears throat> get this. It has a bit of a smell, but it's not a bad smell, but it's there is a bit of some odor there with this paint so if you're very sensitive to odors you might want to consider that <laughs> hmm that light blue isn't activating as easily as the darker blue which is a strange and interesting thing here about it. Maybe because it dried faster, I am not sure. It's, it dries a bit faster than the darker one. So bear that in mind. But if you activate it immediately, it activates very well with water. So one thing I've noticed is that 
If you want to activate them with water, you have to act fast. Because here in this section, um, in the few seconds that I started my camera again, it already started drying. So that has made it a little streaky over here, but we can save it. Also, the streakiness is not a bad thing. It's part of the effect. So, you know, if you want to <laughs> consider it one of the effects of this type of medium, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the fun too. Okay, just a few scribbles. Oh, and here's something very nice about these, which is that the cap, it fits perfectly on the at the back of the pen. So yeah, very nice. Okay, so that is my little <laughs> abstract landscape, you could say. <laughs> Let me just uh, blend those colors a little. Let's have a look at the Artix pens in comparison because I did say I was going to test those as well. So these, <coughs> they're supposed to be acrylic markers. However, the problem with these is that they are not very opaque. They don't do much and they, they, they don't have the best coverage. Um, I have created some things with them that look quite nice and I'm very happy about, such as this and this, like little landscapes here. But I do find that it's impossible to get really good coverage with them and the light colors are not very opaque. So let me show you a demonstration. Also, they run out of ink very fast. So that's another thing I don't like about them. So here's a green. Now, if you want to let it, let it dry for a bit and try a slightly lighter color on top. <clears throat> so as you can see you can it does show up a bit on the darker color but it's too it's very transparent and you don't get a lot of opacity so let me try with an even darker color let's try with this dark blue over here <clears throat> We'll let it dry for a bit and then try to go over it with a light blue. <clears throat> now the thing that I do like about these pens, about the Artix pens, is that they activate very well with water and it's almost like gouache in a pen. So if that's something you're, you're into, then they could be fun. Um, I do find them fun, but I won't be repurchasing them. Once I run out of these, I won't get them again. Um, I think I really like the Thule art much better. <laughs> Those are fantastic. Okay, so here is a demonstration you can see a lighter pen on top of the darker one, it doesn't really show up very well. So, and the white is not good at all with these Artix pens. It's just absolutely dreadful. <clears throat> it's 
it's not opaque, it doesn't show up. And after a few uses, look how patchy that is. It doesn't even, there's not much left in terms of ink in here. So it's just, yeah. And it activates the layer underneath. So they're not the best. I will use them up, but I will not repurchase these. Look, this is the gray. It doesn't show up very well either. Yeah. They're fun and they were not expensive, so I don't feel too much buyer's remorse, but not repurchasing those. Okay, so this is um, the end of my video. This is uh, my little uh, unboxing and semi-review, mini-review of these um, new Thule Art, my new Thule, well, they're new to me, Thule Art acrylic paint pens. Um, this is the Earth, set the earth and skin colors and the essentials uh set the essential acrylic pen set and yeah really loving these i am gonna have so much fun with them i will um make a few paintings in my tiny still in and burn nova um beige paper sketchbook which i use for tiny landscapes and I will show them to you once I'm done with the sketchbook. I'll do a little sketchbook tour. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this and if you would like to see other types of reviews where I compare the more expensive version of a type of an art supply to the less expensive one. And we can see together if um, the inexpensive one the cheaper one is actually better than the more expensive one because sometimes that happens and till then i hope you stay creative and thank you for watching bye